are these people? Hi, everybody. Now we're back. Hi. Wave Reef. Tell me you can hear. Tell them they can hear you. Hi, everybody. All right. That was fun, everybody. Wasn't that awesome? Jesse's back. Jesse was here. Jesse and Jess. That was a treat. All right. And we're almost at midnight, and we have like two stories left uh, this story and then quick hits, and then we can go to boats. All right. CJ okay. Hopkins. Holy shit. Um, so, Aya Velasquez is a writer over on the Substex. She was actually at the trial. She attended. And she tried to describe what it was like to be in the courtroom, first of all. I appreciated that. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. bring CJ's article that he wrote. Um, it's funny. I have that exact yeah. same tie that the lawyer's wearing. That's crazy. That's a Brooks Brothers tie, believe it or not. Anyway. So the fact that the Tiergarten District Court acquitted author CJ Hopkins in January was not something that the Berlin Prosecutor's Office was prepared to accept. They appealed and were proved right. Yeah. He got convicted. The appeal in the U.S., you know, there's something called double jeopardy. If the prosecutors lose a case, they can't prosecute wait, you. Wait, on wait. The... I know what it is. It's where, it's where when you bet, you can like bet more, and then Alex Trebek, like, you know, gives you more money for the double jeopardy, right? Right. They can't put you on trial for the same thing. That's double jeopardy. They, but apparently, they can do that. They can mm -hmm. appeal. The, the prosecution can appeal a case that they lose putting you on trial effectively for the same thing with a higher court, which is crazy. So there's Christopher J. Hopkins. I very rare you even see his real name, but what Aya says is that I have already attended various court hearings, including criminal trials, but I have never experienced scenes like the one that took place yesterday, September 30th at 10.30 a.m. in front of the Berlin Court of Appeal. After the Berlin-based mm. American author and satirist C.J. Hopkins was acquitted of the charge of disseminating unconstitutional symbols by the Tiergarten District Court in January, which we covered on the show, the Berlin Prosecutor, Public Prosecutor's Office appealed and won. The Court of Appeal found Hopkins guilty of disseminating propaganda material of an unconstitutional organization, the Nazis. The case will now... The case will now be referred back to the district court, which will decide on the level of the sentence. Today, today's main appeal hearing took place under horrendous anti-terror conditions. All visitors had to hand in all Her. their belongings. Her. Anti terror though. No, it's crazy. All their belongings had to be Her. handed in at the entrance of the court, excluding any liability. Okay, even journalists were denied the use of laptops. Freedom of the press was therefore definitely restricted on this day, which again, we read a month ago when CJ set up, when, when they told him he was going to have to show up in court, what the, what it was going to be like. The court staff was also tense and extremely irritable. Some of those waiting outside the courtroom were treated like small children. No surprise. However, as many people misunderstand, Hopkins wasn't even charged for the book cover itself. The latter is completely legal. The indictment only related to two posts at the time still tweets on the platform X, formerly Twitter. Reef will never call it X. In which Hopkins linked image excerpts of his book cover with a political message that sharply and pointedly criticized the corona regime. Okay, he'd also pointed out the fact that even Karl Lauterbach had acknowledged the symbolic nature of the mask below are the two posts for which Hopkins was taken to court for the second time yesterday. And I'll show that in a little bit. <clears throat> if the Hopkins mm -hmm. case shows one thing, it's, it, it's in CJ's article. That's why if the uh, Hopkins case shows one yeah. thing like a burning glass, it's this, there is no longer equ equality before the law in Germany. The rule of law has already eroded so irreversibly that it would be wrong to describe it as such without restriction. What Spiegel, Stern, or Jan Bormann were, are allowed to do, critics of the government have not been allowed to do for a long time. They're declared criminals for criticizing the policies of the German government. They find themselves in an unequal battle from the outset, which is almost impossible for them to win. While the resources of private individuals are limited, the state has almost 
infinite resources at its disposal, which is why you usually can't have that double jeopardy appeal, because the state can continue to prosecute you forever. Every acquittal can subsequently be contested by the public prosecutor's office with just a three-liner. Money is irrelevant. It's practically infinite. It's our money. Taxpayers' money. All right? Now, here's CJ standing at his trial. Um, this was courtesy of Epoch Times from his own article, Fear and Loathing in New Normal Germany. All right? And like Laura Kay... CJ plants his tongue firmly in cheek, but this is also pretty fucking serious, all right? The first rule, rule of new normal Germany is you do not compare new normal Germany to Nazi Germany. If you do that, new normal Germany will punish you. It will sick the federal criminal police on you. What is, what, what is that noise, Reef? Reef? I don't know. You're frozen? Did we just lose Reef? Maybe. Ah! Did did Hurricane Helene just take your take Reef away? I don't know. Uh, you, can you hear me at all? I hear you. I don't see you. You 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 sound like you're underwater. Like all my monitors just blinked out. Uh oh. Um. Uh. I don't know. I'll work on it. Oh, okay, okay. Well, we'll see. Whew. All righty. Um, so I'm going to, I think what I'll do is I'll flip Reef off. Flip him off in the meantime. And uh, when he gets it worked out, we'll bring him back. Uh, where is my Reef box here? Come on. No, 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 no. Wires going on here. Where's monitor one? There it is. All righty. Now, anyway, and we'll hear him when he comes back. I've got the audio still on. The first rule, like I said, of new normal, new Nazi, new Nazi normal Germany. That's funny. No, the first rule of new normal Germany is you do not compare new normal Germany to Nazi Germany. If you do that, new normal Germany will punish you. They'll sick the federal criminal police on you. It'll report you to its domestic intelligence agency. It will ban your books. It will censor your tweets. It will prosecute you on fabricated hate crime charges. I know this because that's what's happened to me. Um, this is CJ Hopkins. I broke the first rule of new normal Germany. I compared new normal Germany to Nazi Germany, and I did it with the cover artwork of my book. And like I said... This is the cover artwork of his book. So this is the very famous Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. And this is the Rise of the New Normal Reich, written by C.J. Hopkins. Yes, that's a swastika on the cover. A swastika covered by a medical mask. I tweeted that artwork in 2022. The German authorities prosecuted me for that and convicted me for that. So now I'm a hate criminal and anti-Semite and a trivializer of the Holocaust. Yay. All right, again, two tweets. That's the second rule of New Normal Germany. You never, ever, ever display a, a swastika. Display a swastika, of course, is not in Ordnung. Displaying swastikas is totally verboten. Unless you're the health minister of New Normal Germany and you're comparing your political opponents to the Nazis. Or unless you're a popular German celebrity and you're comparing the Russians and their supporters to the Nazis. Or unless you're a mainstream magazine and you're comparing German populace to the Nazis. Yeah. In which case, displaying a swastika is fine and it is not verboten and definitely not a hate crime. This makes sense, right? This this totally, like, that's consistent. And that's the third rule of new normal Germany. If you disagree, if you agree with the government, obey their orders and parrot their propaganda, you're not a hate criminal. If you are the government, like an actual minister in the government, like the Minister of Health, for example, you're definitely not a hate criminal. 
And if you're part of government propaganda apparatus, need, need, needless to say, you're also not a hate criminal. However, if you criticize the government, or if you compare the government to Nazi Germany, and if you do that using your book cover art featuring a swastika behind a COVID mask that seems awfully specific, then you're absolutely officially a hate criminal and an anti-Semite and a trivializer of the Holocaust. Thanks, folks. Here's how Berlin's Superior Appellate Court explained in their press release after they overturned my acquittal in district court, quote, The swastika, one of the main symbols of the banned National Socialist Workers Party, is used here exclusively to express criticism of the federal government's corona policy. No, that is not allowed. A clear departure from the ideals of National Socialism cannot be seen in the posts in question. So he's supporting Nazi stuff by comparing Germany to the Nazi. Oh, the comparison of corona measures, which are supposed to be embodied by the use of mouth and nose coverings, with the Nazi terror regime symbolized by the swastika, represents a trivialization of National Socialism and the National Socialist genocide of millions of Jews, but not a criticism of it. Wait. They're saying he wasn't criticizing Germany. Uh-huh. I remember when the presiding judge read, out, read that out in court. I remember it distinctly because the judge, to her right, the bespectacled woman with the short white hair, see the photograph of the courtroom, was glaring at me with bone-chilling hatred. We got into a staring contest, which she eventually won because I couldn't take it for very long. After a minute or so... I started having flashbacks of scenes in the from The Pianist, Roman Polanski's film. I think it starred Adrian, whatever. He won the Academy Award for that. Um, and the eyes of medical mask-wearing Germans when they saw the protest message I wrote on the mask uh, that I was forced to wear in grocery stores in order to buy food during the rollout of the new normal in 2020 to 2022. That protest re message read... Belfell ist Belfell, which roughly translates as orders are orders, and was the Nazis' infamous defense of Nuremberg. I was just following orders. If you've never been surrounded by mobs of medical mask-wearing Germans glaring at you with seething, utterly bone-chilling hatred, well, let me assure you, it's quite an experience. I experienced it daily for over two years. All right. I experienced it again in Das Kammergericht, where my acquittal back in January was summarily overturned at the insistence of the Berlin public prosecutor. Yes, they can do that in new normal Germany. I'm going to spare you the procedural details and legal arguments and descriptions of the ham-fisted anti-terror style security protocols that the court ordered in effect for my, tr for my trial. If you want to read that again, Aya Velasco has covered it in her recent extensive report, as well as Dr. Clivia von de Witz, a German judge and expert on the Nazi symbol ban statutes, covered the legal questions in this article before this article after the trial. I haven't translated that second article, but here's an excerpt. Quote, with this decision, German judiciary is once again moving away from the principles of liberal democracy, which we are not surprised, which thrives on the exchange of conflicting beliefs and, and opinions, as well as the criti as criticism of government actions. If Der Spiegel and Stern are permitted to use swastikas on their magazine covers, the same freedom must apply to those who criticize the government. When, as here, the judiciary begins to apply double standards and condemns obvious criticism of the government via use of the Nazi symbols and conducts a trial under inappropriate anti-terror conditions, one has to ask oneself how far the judiciary in Germany has departed from fundamental democratic principles. The answer is pretty goddamn far. In response to the court's ruling that such posts are not covered by freedom of expression or freedom of art, what, if not that, is freedom of expression or freedom of art? An American married to a Jew can hardly be accused of 
trivializing national socialism or of not expressing an explicit rejection of national socialism. Okay. He's married to a Jewish woman. I'm guessing anti-Zionist, but I don't know. Or you can read Eugippius, another German, writing in English in the Daily Skeptic. Or Boris Reitschuster, another German, right, reporting in German. In, or the Epoch Times, or a bunch of places. Or if you'd prefer to hear from the enormous Goebbelsian keyboard instrument that is the majority of the mainstream German press, and you're able to read German or you have a translator, you can read all about how seditious and, and insane I am in Der Tagesspiegel, uh, the Tageszeitung, and the Legal Tribune Online, a legal journal. For some reason, I can't possibly fashion fathom Der Spiegel were rather reserved in their coverage. I'm sure it had nothing to do with the fact that they had printed a big fat swastika on their cover. Right. It was rather surprising that uh, the mainstream German press turned up to cover the proceedings as they had been studiously ignoring the story pro before. Maybe the court's PR people contacted them, or maybe they just smelled blood in the water. In any event, the atmosphere in room 145A of Das Kammergericht was dripping with sanctimonious fascistic authority. It was clear from the outset that the three-judge panel were there to teach a COVID denier a lesson and remind the German public that what happens when you break the rules of new normal Germany. The judges had clearly already decided to overturn my acquittal, so the rest was just theater, which, apart from my attorney's lengthy arguments and my statement to the court, mostly consisted of the judges radiating imperious contempt and seething hostility down at us from the bench like an enormous three-headed Gila monster. The prosecutor had mumbled two or three sentences in a monotone at the outset of the trial. He didn't bother to appear to present an actual legal argument. That would have ruined the fait accompli. Mice have seen that effect that they were going for. I have to give the court and the prosecution credit for their dramaturgy. The, uh, the point of staging a public trial like this, which the prosecution demanded, which is unusual at the appellate level, wasn't to pretend to be carrying out justice. It was a show of force, a demonstration, a public humiliation ritual. And all things, all things considered, they staged it well. It's taken a few days, but I mostly recovered. Now, he put a whole bunch of stuff in there about how he had gone out in public with the masks and a bunch of um, COVID stuff. Go check out this article. It's much longer than this even. But he says, it's taken a few days, <clears throat> but I mostly recovered. After consultations with my fearless attorney, I've decided to submit my case to the Supreme Court because, well, at this point, I kind of have to. <clears throat> if I don't, the precedent of the new normal German authorities are trying to establish will stand, and the right to freedom of expression in Germany will have become nothing but a sick fascist joke. And yes, that right is guaranteed under their constitution. It isn't quite the First Amendment, but it's good enough for Germany, and I'm not willing to let it be distorted and make a mockery of by a bunch of fascists, not without a fight. So if you want to help me fight that fight, which is going to cost about 12,000 euros in legal fees, that's on top of what he's already spent. Plus, whatever expenses I incur along the way, you can contribute to my rebooted legal defense fund. If you do, please note the disclaimer at the bottom. He says he extends his heartfelt gratitude to everyone who's already contributed. Your engagement and generosity has overwhelmed him once again. He didn't want this fight, but now it has to be fought. If it were just about him, it wouldn't matter that much, but it's not just about him and it matters greatly. It's a fight that's being fought throughout the West, not just in Germany and the USA and the UK and Ireland and Australia, but everywhere people are fighting to defend constitutional rights and democratic principles, like small d. I don't know whether I'll win my fight, but I know we will win the bigger fight. As I said in my statement to the court, totalitarianism, fascism never wins, not in the long run. History teaches us that. 
and it is history that will teach us all in the end. And again, reminder that CJ is a reader supported uh, writer and publication. So please, I actually picked up a $5 a month paid subscription recently, long overdue. I've been enjoying his stuff for a long time. He's Indie Media Award honoree for 2023 for journalism. So speaking of the Indie Media Awards, we're going to be doing them at the end of this month, Reef and I. Again, we are no longer on Rockfin. There are different ways to contribute and to support INN and the show. We really appreciate if you do. Um, Cash App is the easiest way, least amount of fees, and puts money into, the, into our bank accounts in a couple days. Then we've got Kofi, and the QR code up there will, will get you to Kofi. And you scan that with your phone. You can give us a couple, a couple bucks, five bucks for a coffee. PayPal's the way to do it. Rumble, Rumble Rants, like Anna was doing over there on Rumblaze. 